the name of Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. I welcome you all, my dear little friends. Let us begin the session with a prayer. Abba Father, thank you for this beautiful day. We are placing ourselves into your loving hands. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, grace, wisdom, knowledge and understanding. Help us to comprehend whatever we are learning. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Once again, a hearty welcome to all of you. Today, I am going to do the second chapter, Aaron, from the sixth grade textbook. Hope you all are ready with your textbook, Bible and the writing material. So let's get started. Before I tell you the aim of the lesson, I want to ask you a question. What would you like to become when you grow up? Engineer, doctor, CA, scientist, pilot, wow, what's that? YouTuber, great. So you got a clear idea of what you want to become. Very good. The aim of the lesson is to study about the priestly vocation and to respect priests. Now, when I asked you what you want to become, nobody told me that you want to become a priest. Yes, becoming a priest is not easy. And everybody cannot become a priest because it is a divine calling. It has to come from within. Now, to tell you about who is a priest, I would like to show you a clipping. I'm sure all of you all have identified the holy, the spiritual fathers in the clipping. Now how do we address them? His holiness, the patria. His beatitude, the catholicos. His grace, the metropolitan. Reverend father. Now we have used different adjective to address the spiritual father as per their hierarchy. But for a common person, to address a common person, we don't use any adjective. What does this indicate? Yes, they are special people. Now how do you greet the priest? You must have seen in the Malayalam movies. When a priest comes, they join their hands and say, Isho Mishihai Kistudi Ayirikete. What is the meaning? Praise be to the Lord. When the priest comes to your house, how do you greet him? Barikamor Achche. What is the meaning? Bless me, O Lord. So that means, who is a priest? Yes, he is the God's representative. He is God's messenger. They teach us the word of God. They help us to believe and act on the word of God. They are the instruments of mercy and artisans of peace. They are the intermediaries. They pray for us. Now you have seen during the Nicene Creed, the priest is kneeling down and praying for each one of us. They are our spiritual father. They are shepherding us, leading us from darkness into light. So when you honor a priest, you are honoring God. Remember, when you are honoring a priest, you are honoring God. So let us study the Bible verse which is taken from Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. 
what does it say? For the lips of a priest are to preserve knowledge because he is the messenger of the Lord Almighty and people seek instruction from his mouth. So from this Bible verse, it is very clear that priests are God's messengers. Now the priest, they perform all the sacraments. You know how many sacraments are there? There are seven holy sacraments. But no sacrament is complete without the holy kurbana. Do you know who instituted the first Eucharist? Yes, it was our Lord Jesus Christ in the house of Saint Mark. The day before his crucifixion, he was having supper with his apostles. And there he took the bread, thanks God, blesses the bread, breaks it into two, and he gives it to them and says, Take this, this is my body, I'm giving it to you. Then he took a cup, mixed wine with water, and said, This is my blood. Thus, through the Eucharist, what is there? It's the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Eucharist, in the appearance of bread and wine. It's the body of Christ which is contained, offered and received. Eucharist, the body of Christ is contained, offered and received. So how should we receive the Holy Kurbana? Yes, with utmost purity and preparation. The Holy Kurbana or the Eucharist, it, is, it was the service performed by Lord Jesus Christ in front of his apostles. Through the Eucharist, we study or we see the sacrifice of our Lord on the calendar. My dear children, why do you go to church on Sunday? To show your new dress to your friends? To attend the Kurbana? It's not attending the Kurbana. You are actually going to participate in the Kurbana because Holy Kurbana is the enactment of our Lord Christ's birth to second coming. So how should you participate in the Kurbana? How do you stand in the church? Do you match one another? Do you kick your friend? Or do you feel like drinking water or to go to the washroom? No. You should participate in the Kurbana with utmost prayerful silence. Remember, Christianity is not a mere religion. It is the way of life. It is forgiveness in action. And you children are very important. Because God loves little children. So in the scripture it says, Let the little children come to me. Now where do you stand in the church? You are standing in the front row. You know it is said, Children are apostles of God, sent forth day by day to preach of love, peace and hope. Yes. So feel happy, you are the Apostle of God. Now, this Eucharist, it was instituted by our Christ in the house of Saint Mark. And this picture of the Last Supper, it's very close to our heart. And this was in Jerusalem. But through this lesson, I'm going to take you to different places. The first place we visited is Jerusalem. Now, we are going to learn about 
a modern priest. But before that, an engineer has to study in an engineering college. Now to become a doctor, one has to study in a medical college. Where do you think the priest study? The study of religion is called as theology. And our priests, they study in the seminary. Okay, so now there is a little activity for you to write the name of the vicar of your church and to mention his spiritual activities. You are going to do that. So we are going to learn about Aaron, the modern priest. So first, let us see his family background. What is the meaning of Aaron? Aaron means enlightened, full of knowledge. He was the son of Amaram and Jochebed. He belonged to the tribe of Levi. His siblings were his younger brother Moses and older sister Miriam. He was married to Elisheba and he had four sons Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. He lived for 123 years and he died at the summit of Mount Hor. This Mount Hor is in Jordan. You can see the picture of the tomb of Aaron. Now, let us study about the qualities of Aaron. Aaron was a good orator. Now, to become a good orator, one has to have clarity of thought. He was obedient, kind and humble, faithful. He stood for peace. He had brotherly love. He was a good leader and an ideal priest. Now about brotherly love. In the scripture, it says that Moses was 80 years old and Aaron was three years older to Moses. So how old must be Aaron? Yes, 83 years old. But whatever his younger brother told him, he listened. How about you? Do you listen to your younger brother? Or you are grumbling? So to study about the qualities of Aaron, the Bible reference that is given is taken from the book of Exodus chapter 7. So after the class is over, you can read the Bible, Exodus chapter 7. But now I am going to tell you the gist of Exodus chapter 7. In Exodus chapter 7, we read about what God did to Pharaoh and the Egyptians in order to save the people of Israel. He multiplied his signs, judgments and wonders so that he could demonstrate his will and power. God wanted Moses to rescue the people from Egypt. Because Pharaoh was torturing them. Pharaoh was a ruthless man. But Moses could not speak fluently. He would stammer. So God appointed Aaron as Moses' spokesperson or prophet. Aaron's rod played an important part in God's plan to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. God sends Moses and Aaron 
to the Pharaoh, instructing that when Pharaoh would demand to show a miracle, Aaron should show the miracle. He should put his rod down on the floor and then the stick of his rod would turn into a serpent. So you can see in the picture. Now Pharaoh, he thinks that these are simple tricks. So he calls his magicians and they also perform the same trick. They also put their rod onto the floor and the rod turns into snake, serpents. But what happens to the rod of Aaron? Aaron's rod is not an ordinary rod. It is filled with God's power. So it turns into a bigger serpent and it eats all the other serpents. So this is the first miracle performed by Aaron. But Pharaoh doesn't, it doesn't affect the Pharaoh. He doesn't release the people. No, he doesn't release the Israelites. So God tells Moses and Aaron to go to the Pharaoh once again. But now he says he, they must go to the Pharaoh when he is on the river bank of Nile. Now you know about river Nile? It's the longest river in the world. So both Aaron and Moses, they go to Pharaoh to meet Pharaoh on the banks of river Nile. And there again, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He doesn't listen to them. So once again, Aaron uses his rod. He moves his rod over the river. And what happens? The blue waters of river Nile, it turns into red color. It turns into blood. Red, red, red. So this is the second miracle performed by Aaron. Now when you read Exodus, you will come across the ten plagues. But we are not going to discuss about the other plagues. We are only going to discuss about these two miracles performed by Aaron. And because of this, all the qualities, like I would like to tell you, since we are talking about Aaron's rod, I want to mention, you know, like God commands Moses to get all the tribe leaders of Israel. There are 12 tribes, you know that. And God tells Moses that he must bring all the tribe leaders in front of the tent of meeting. And he says that you must ask them to inscribe their names on the rod. Now Aaron's rod represented the tribe of Levi. And God tells the person whom I choose, his rod will sprout. Now who do you think whose rod must have sprouted? Yes. It was Aaron's rod. It not only sprouted, but it blossomed. That means it bore flowers. And then it also had fruits of almonds on it. So this budding rod of Aaron, you know, it is kept in the Ark of the Covenant. And as a testimony of God's choice of Aaron and Moses to lead the people. Now my dear children, when you go to the church next time, in the holy altar, in the center, there is the cross that is kept. And this cross, it depicts Aaron's budding rod. Alright? So all the qualities of Aaron, you know, we have learned he was obedient, he was humble, kind, he was a good orator, faithful. And because of all these properties, 
all these good qualities god commands to moses he tells you bring your brother aaron and his sons to me out of all the people of israelites i have chosen aaron and his sons to serve me as the priest so you see priesthood is god's calling the no, priesthood is entered only by god's call so he god also commands moses to consecrate aaron by anointing oil on his head now priestly service is glorious and beautiful and by anointing holy spirit is filled so you can see god tells moses to make holy garments for adam the high priest and the holy garment the sacred garment you can see the picture you know it is so beautiful and it has got different parts there is a gold plate headband then you can see there is this ephod which is made of blue onyx stones and this ephod is the symbol of authority ephod is the symbol of authority then there is a breastplate and on the breastplate the names of the 12 tribes of israel is written so all the parts of this holy garment it has got different functions so the holy garment is the symbol of authority now a police inspector how do you know he is a police inspector without his uniform he is just an ordinary man it is his uniform that gives the authority to him. so aaron was chosen by god to be the holy priest and this biggest gift was given by god to aaron and after the demise of aaron his son eleazar became the priest so this tradition now you know eucharist was first performed by our lord jesus christ he was the chief celebrant then the tradition passed to the apostles later on to bishops priests the deacons so like this the succession continues and with the eucharist holy eucharist tells us about the sacrifice made by our jesus christ on the calvary so before that animal sacrifices were made so after the holy eucharist instituted by jesus christ the animal sacrifices were stopped so you can see the priesthood it passes from zakaria to moses moses to moses to zakaria and it then it passed on to john and john passed it to our lord christ ordained apostles 12 and then they were sent forth by him there's a beautiful malayalam song we shall listen to this malayalam song four lines are mentioned here it's a very melodious song so i shall play this song for you let us try and learn it Once again, 
so that you can learn it. So, you should learn this song. Now, let's have a quick recap. Meaning of arrow? Enlightenment. Tribe of arrow? Levi. Place where Aaron died and buried, Mount Ophir. Person who anointed Aaron as a priest, Moses. Successor of Aaron, Eleazar. Holy Kurbana instituted by Jesus, the place, House of Mark. And the two miracles performed by Aaron, Aaron's rod or staff becomes a snake and water of river Nile turns into blood. My dear children, with this, the chapter is over. I hope all of you all have understood. But as I had told you, God has a definite purpose for each one of us. So he has picked you up and he is carved a beautiful smile onto your face and he has put his light into you. So my dear children, you are the little lambs of the Lord. Let your light shine by your good deeds and glorify the Lord's name. So be happy, stay blessed. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.